right, all right. Shalom, Yasharala. Back again with another lesson breakdown of the scriptures today. I want to start off by giving all praises to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, Bahashem, in the name of Yahweh Shai, His only begotten Son, Bahashem, Rokakwadash. I want to say Shalom to the elect and the one third of Yasharala scattered across the four corners of the earth. And I want to say Shalom to the apostles and elders preaching this truth worldwide with all sincerity and shalom to you uh aquatha and akiams out there listening and learning dividing the word by truth and um today's lesson um is based off the lost uh 10 uh the lost 12 tribes chart and the reason why i decided to uh go in to this lesson is because um i've actually been doing some research on my own with all due diligence and um you know, um, as, you know, the apostles and elders um, before and now, um, there's an old saying that came from them saying that, you know, in order to understand the mystery, you must go back in history. And that's and that's very true because, um, you know, you got a lot of bugged out, you know, Jake today, you know, um, they don't consider to go out on their own and look up certain information and dive deep you know they want everything handed to them and then if you don't provide them um a description or if you don't provide evidence uh to their own understanding then everything that you present on the table um they either not going to get it or they're going to scoff at you or they're going to laugh or they're going to say you know you don't have the truth or whatever the case may be so you know um, the scriptures are true when it says, you know, our people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge because they don't do their research due diligence. Now, I have here on the screen a, a chart of the lost to uh, 12 tribes of Israel. OK, so we're just going to run through this quick um, and then I'm going to bring out some information. But before we do that, Lord willing, um, I want to pull up a, a video, too, as well. Uh, because one of the brothers from uh, the GMS camp, forget the brother's name down in Mississippi, but um, love the brother to death, uh, love GMS. I've actually got my, um, uh, knowledge and teachers from Great Millstone. So Shalom to them brothers out there. Shalom to the apostles and the elders of, uh, Great Millstone, uh, who has, uh, actually been giving me this truth and ha and I've gotten my teachers and understandings from them. So Shalom to you brothers out there pushing the word of, of the truth. Now, going back to this, um, right here, you see at the top, you know, you have Judah, <laughs> And then um, on the right side, you have the so-called Negroes, uh, so-called African-Americans. You have Benjamin, the tribe of Benjamin, which is the West Indies. You have Levi, which is the Haitians. Now, these three these three uh, tribes are considered the southern kingdom, okay, which are the Jews, okay, because the word Jew comes from the word Judah, all right? And then you have um, the rest of the ten tribes, Simeon, which, is our, which are the Dominicans, Zebulun, um, Guatemalan, uh, Guatemalans, um, Ephraim, Puerto Ricans, Manessa, Cubans, Gad, which are the uh, Native Americans, okay, Reuben, uh, Seminole Indians, Neftali, the Argentinians and Chileans, Asher, the Colombians, and Issachar, which are the Mexicans, all right? Now, I've been seeing a lot of brothers um, in the past few months um, who disregards this chart and claim that uh, this is incorrect, you know, and it's those same people that is going to say that it's incorrect, but yet they don't come out here and make videos to explain um, why it's incorrect. They don't come out here to explain that, you know, the charts that the brothers are putting up is incorrect because, you know, theologians, um, uh, biblical scholars and so forth they are going to tell you well we don't know where the lost tribes are uh pertaining to the scriptures and that's a lie because the scriptures actually tells you okay and starting with the curses in deuteronomy 28 which let's go to that all right let's start off with a scripture let's go to the book of deuteronomy and we're going to go to chapter 28 all right because the scripture says prove all things so uh, right around we're going to start at verse 15 this is the book of Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 15 now before I read this chapter 
one of the five books of the uh, one of the uh, books of the Torah, the Moses. Right. This is talking about the law, statutes and commandments given unto the children of Israel, all 12 tribes. Now, we're going to start at verse 15. It says, but it shall come to pass if thou wilt not hearken, meaning listen unto the voice of the Lord, thy power to observe, to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. OK, now. What I want to get is in this same chapter, it tells us that these curses shall be a sign. All right. Uh, I think it's around Salakia. Here it is. Verse uh, 46. Here's the point. Okay. And they. Well, actually, let's start at uh, 45. Moreover, all these curses, talking about the curses to the children of Israel, if they do not listen to the law, statutes, commandments of the Most High Yahweh, moreover, these curses shall come upon thee and shall pursue thee and overtake thee till thou be destroyed, because thou hearkens not unto the voice of the, of the Lord Yahweh thy power to keep his commandments and the statutes which he commanded thee. Verse 6 is the point. And they, meaning these curses, shall be upon thee for a sign and for a wonder and upon thy seed forever. Okay. Now, what we have to understand here is these curses were going to be for a sign and for a wonder upon thy seed forever. What does that mean for uh, thy seed? Meaning from your children to your children's children to your children's children's children. Okay. No matter what generation from that particular seed, which is all of Israel, the 12 tribes, the signs of our curses will be upon us. And even till this day, the same curses that's outlined in this chapter, Deuteronomy chapter 28, okay, which we're about to go into, right? These exact curses that have been outlined are still happening today to the 12 tribes. This is one of the ways that we can uh, search and find the lost 10 tribes of Israel because it said that the signs that are outlined within these curses, okay, we will be able to tell. You just have to pay attention to prophecy, okay? Now, real quick, let's jump down to 58. If thou will not observe to do all the words of this law that are written in this book, that thou mayest fear this glorious and fearful name, Yahweh thy power, then Yahweh will make thy plagues wonderful, and the plagues of thy seed, even great plagues, and of long con uh, continu uh, Salakia, of long continuance and sore sicknesses, and of long continuance. Okay? Because what you have to understand is what does he mean by plagues? Plagues can be anything from diseases okay sickness okay um look what's going on today coronavirus all right you think that's by coincidence no because what you have to understand is and let's come back to that let's get another scripture let's get a precept because the most high he's in control both on the right hand side and the left hand side Okay. Deuteronomy 32, 29. See now that I, even I am he, and there is no God with me. I kill and I make alive. I wound and I heal. Neither is there any that can deliver out of my hand. So that's a cut to, you know, um, a Christianity uh, doctrine that says that the uh, that God, you know, loves every, you know, he's just a kind gentle whatever the case may be that's not true okay so let's go back to chapter 28 and or verse yeah 58 
And then one of the last things is 68. And the Lord Yahweh shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships by the way of I spake unto thee, thou shalt not, thou shalt see it no more again, and there shall be sold unto your enemies for bondmen and bondwomen, and no man shall buy you. Now that word Egypt, which a lot of people get wrong, doesn't mean the actual country Egypt. It means house of bondage. Okay, let's go to Exodus chapter 20, because the scripture says prove all things, right? Verse 1. And thy power spake all these words, saying, I am Yahweh thy power, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. So Egypt means bondage, because when the Israelites were in uh, slave to the Egyptians, they were in a house of bondage. The real um, name of that place is Mizraim. It's not Egypt. Okay. So we go back to Deuteronomy. Yeah, we read that verse over again. So when we reread it, and Yahweh shall bring thee into bondage again with ships. So now you have to look at when it says in verse 48, oh, Slakia, uh, where were we? Verse 46, and they shall be upon thee for a sign. So you have to ask yourself, the nation, which nation of people went into bondage again with ships? Okay, by the way of, I spake unto thee, thou shalt see it no more again, meaning the land where the Lord has set us up, and there should be sold unto your enemies. So who is our enemies? The heathens. Bond women and bond men and children. Now, before we go any further, um, this is the brother from the Great Millstone Camp. I'm just going to play um, a little bit of it because we're going to get into this chart the 12 tribes and we're going to prove that we can we know for sure that this chart is correct so we're going to bring it out i'm just going to let it play 150 for hard bet, all right lost tribes of promised lands but the price is lower now because he saw all the information gonna come out all right so we're going to read from this book real quick okay going to speak on Columbus, Christopher Columbus, the devil, all right, now we're in a chapter that is entitled Enter Columbus, chapter 6, okay, the scriptures say, let me get the scripture for you, I'm going to get what it says, all right. Give me a second, Baba Pasha. All right. The book of First Thessalonians, chapter five. First Thessalonians, chapter five, and verse twenty-one. Prove all things. Hold fast that which is good. The point is, in First Thessalonians five and twenty-one, it tells you. To prove all things. That's why we go into these different books. All right? So we prove all things. So I'm about to go into this book. We're speaking on Columbus. Let's read what Columbus did. So he knew to come to this region of the earth. Specifically. All right? It's on page 78. Now, we're going to read from the highlighted portion. You got to excuse me. It's a very old book. So the book is falling apart. All right? It's a very old book, but, you know, the spirit is still keeping it together. All right? So we're on page 78, last paragraph. Last paragraph. Along with the racial Christianity, along with this racial Christianity, <laughs> and Christianity is racist. All right? <laughs> Christianity is racist, man. Is racism. Christopher Columbus, Cristobal Cologne, Christ bearing conqueror. Meaning, let's say I'm Columbus and I got that name. Christopher Columbus spirit. He's saying, I'm coming to enslave you in the name of Christianity. Christianity is racism. Stop. 
and with the brothers going in there, he's actually right because if you go back to the transatlantic slave trade back in uh, 1492, when the French, so like it, when the um, the Spaniards and the Dutch, um, when they, because they were the first ones, I believe, that came over um, and started, you know, enslaving those uh, that part of the region of West Africa, and they went um, further out. And they started a slave trade route, um, like a triangular slave trade route. And then what ended up happening was um, then you had the Europeans, you had the Brits that, that came um, because they wasn't a part of it at the first. Uh, when they came, they then teamed up and then they started doing their own thing. And then what this brother, uh, what, what the elders want to go into, he's going to show you how Christopher Columbus ended up using the scriptures okay and i'm also going to show you two proof using the scriptures um to go over to that what they considered back then the new world which was america's uh, because at that point in time most of all humanity um resided over on the eastern side of the world with africa northern part of europe you know and uh in the asia minor uh region but on the western side of the world, in the Americas, um, to them, that was considered the place where no man dwelt. But what people have to understand is there were already uh, what people will call today indigenous people in that land. So the issue that we have here is we're being told one thing from history books, all right, so-called scholars, theologians, or whatever. But then when you go and look up the actual backstory and you have independent authors and readers out there who will bring out real information which is one of the books that this brother is reading now that he's about to bring out you will see that um everything that we've been taught in school obviously is a blatant lie and he's he's right christianity is racism because when they went to conquer those people they threw on this so-called religion onto them because the native americans their true power was Yahweh. But we're going to get into that. I'm going to let the brother finish and keep going so he can bring it out and that you guys may be edified. All right. I'm going to enslave you, kill you, rape your women. I'm going to do all these things in the name of Christianity. Make you worship me. All right. Murder your babies. Smash your babies against the rocks. I'm going to do all this in the name of Christianity. And take all your gold from you, all right? So along with this racial Christianity is an idea of revelation that places the mystical Esdras. Woo! Let's get it. And basically what he's saying there is, <clears throat> okay, the mystical Esdras is in the Apocrypha. So if we go and you have, and the only place you can get the Apocrypha is in the 1611 King James Version, which people say, that um, the Apocrypha is not um, canonical books, that's a lie. Because the Apocrypha um, is part of the scriptures. Okay? It's a part of, it's a part of the scriptures. All right? And I know exactly when this is what I was going to bring out, but let's let's let it continue because that's what that's what you have to understand. Like, um, just real quick, not to go off uh, topic, but when you read about the history of, OK, because I mentioned earlier in the video that the uh, apostles and elders brought out that in order to understand the mystery of the scriptures, you have to understand history. And basically what that means in short term is throughout the Old Testament, it tells you that everybody knows about the story of Moses, how he led Israel, uh, the Israelites out of captivity from the Egyptians. OK, but what people don't understand and what a lot of the um, preachers and pastors seem to bypass in the so-called churches today is the fact that. Right after when Moses was uh, getting ready to be done, you know, and he passed off to go and sleep with his fathers, he was told, okay, he was told that the children of Israel was going to go off, they were going to be disobedient, and that they were going to go into slavery. He was foretold this, and he told the children that, okay? So then the first slavery that they went into, after uh, uh after the egypt 
right? Under uh, Pharaoh Ramesses, they went into, um, you had the Assyrian, then you had the uh, Babylonian captivity, then you had the Medo-Persian, right? And then right after the Medo-Persian, you had, uh, they, they were sold unto the Grecians, okay? And then what's funny is when you get to the New Testament, right? This is where the confusion between when Paul, uh, one of the apostles, was given, the, uh, was ordained by Yahweh Shai to go into the Gentiles, uh, which are the Israelites who were in Gentile state of mind. He was given, the uh, he was ordained to go to them, to teach them, to bring them back into the fold. Because what these pastors and preachers failed to tell the church is that when the Israelites were sold into captivity, right? It was prophesied that they will go into these other lands, dwell among the heathens, and serve their other gods, worshiping wood and stone. And then when they did that, okay, they were going to fall away and forsook the covenant that we made with our father, Yahweh. See, they don't bring this information out. And then our people are too stupid. As the scripture says, our people are destroyed for lack of knowledge because they don't take the time to actually read the scriptures to try to get a comprehension of what is being said and follow the history, the backstory, which is what we're getting into today. So when you compare these things and you bring them all in contrast, you'll start to see who's telling the truth and who's just bringing up, you know, putting things, adding to the scriptures and taking away from the scriptures, which the scripture says, you know, in the book of Revelations. That anybody who adds or takes away that the same plays that are in this book and some plays that are not in this book is going to fall upon them. Roughly paraphrasing. But let's continue on. Hold it up for you. Here we go. The Apocrypha. The Apocrypha. You have a book in the Apocrypha known as Second Ezra's. Second Ezra, all right? So that's what he's speaking about. The mystical Ezra right at the center, which means what? The majority of these so-called Europeans, these Edomites, that were calling themselves Christians, the majority of them read the book of Ezra in the Apocrypha. They read first Ezra, but mainly second Ezra. Which in the Latin Vulgate Bible is 4th Ezra. That's correct. It's 4th Ezra, all right? Now, it says, for the notes, it's saying that the acceptance of the apocryphal Ezra, Ezra in the apocrypha, right? As valid prophecy is what distinguishes the new Christians from the reprobate Jews. Who reject him even though they regard the Old Testament Ezra. Showing you what? First of all, the reprobate Jews, you Edomites that are calling yourselves Jews, you're reprobates and you're not the real Jews anyway. All right? But a lot of you Edomites, so you don't even believe in the Apocrypha. Y'all don't believe in Ezra. You don't believe in 2nd Ezra. You don't believe in the book of Maccabees. 1st and 2nd Maccabees, 3rd. And why is he saying that? Because like I said, those those 14 books that were taken out of the original 1611 King James Bible, um, the reason why they took that out is because, as I said, you have to follow the history. After the Israelites got out of the Egyptian captivity, they went into the Assyrian captivity, Babylonian, uh, Metal Persian, and then they went to the Greek captivity. But when you get up to the book of Daniel, okay, and I believe it's chapter 8. Um, let's get it. You know what? Let me not talk. Let me just prove because the scripture says prove all things. Go to the book of Daniel. And real quick, before we let the brother continue.
because it tells you Daniel Daniel gets the vis the vision. Here it is right here. So let's start at verse 20. The ram which thou sawest having two horns are the kings of uh, Media and Persia. So this is a dream that um, that uh, the prophet Daniel has saw of the great king kingdoms uh, controlling the earth, having rulership over the earth. Now, as I said, you had the Egyptian ran by um, Ramesses, the pharaoh. Then you had the Assyrian. Then you had Babylonian, uh, which was ran by Nebuchadnezzar and then passed down to his son. Then you had Medo-Persia, which I forget the uh, one of you brothers on the comment board can correct me for that, the, uh, who's uh, ruling that. And then, as it says here, verse 21, and the rough goat is the king of Grecia, meaning the Greeks and great horn that is between his eyes is the first king. Now, why would it say the first king? Because when you go to the Apocrypha, which we're going to go to first Maccabees, it tells you. This is where you have to read and go through the history. Remember, we read in Daniel 21, the first king of Grecia, which is uh, Greece, Greeks. This is the first uh, book of first Maccabees, chapter one. And it happened after that Alexander, son of Philip, Alexander, the great son of Philip, the Macedonian who came out of the land of Kittim, had smitten Darius, king of Persians and Medes, which we read in verse 20. The two horns, the ram with the two horns, that he reigned in his stead, the first over Greece, meaning the first king over Greece. What did we just read in the book of Daniel 8, 21? Salak. And the rough goat is the king of Grecia, meaning Greece, and the great horn that is between his eyes is the first king because Alexander, when he took over, right, he became the first king of the Greeks. But where in the Old Testament um, can you read about that history? Because we can go into, you know, uh, first Kings, second Kings, Jeremiah to read about the Assyria captivity, to read about the Babylonian captivity. But where between the Old Testament and the New Testament can we read about the captivity of the Greek Greeks? And what happened when the Israelites was under captivity under Roman, the Roman Empire? Because there's books in the New Testament about uh, the Romans, one of the, the book of Romans. <laughs> okay? And to prove that, look at this. You have Romans, Corinthians, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, Thessalonians. This was all in a region of the Greek, uh, Greek islands in, in Greece, Rome, all of them. Why? Because the Israelites were scattered. Okay? You can't read that history unless you go into the apocryphal books. That's the reason why they took the 14 books out. Because it gave too much information pertaining to what happened to the lost tribes and who is who and who are the wicked people, meaning the wicked nation that's on the face of the earth right now. That's why I laugh when so-called churches and everything say that, well, no, we don't use these books because they're not canonical. You a damn lie. You don't use these books because these books give off the rest of the information that's excluded from the Old Testament and the New Testament. Because when you finish the Old Testament and you jump into the New Testament, no wonder why it's so confusing to you so-called Christians. Because here's the rest of the information, here's the rest of the history. The word apocrypha means hidden in Greek. It's hidden for a reason. But let's let the brother continue on. Right? You don't believe in, you know, Ecclesiasticus, you don't believe in Judith, you don't believe in Tobit, Wisdom of Solomon, etc. Okay? But in particular, Ezra's. But see, these old Christians did. 
which these these weren't Christians either. They were devils just like you. But see, they understood prophecy because they read this book, Second Ephesus. Now it says, the same person in Columbus's eyes, which is Ezra, as canonical authority. And we just read that canonical authority, meaning the um, not only Ezra, but many other uh, of the books in the Apocrypha are of canonical authority because they belong in the scriptures, because they give off that history. Now, a lot of you different Catholics, you would say that Ezra or, or Ezra is, is non-canonized, meaning it's not authorized as scripture, which is dumb as hell, man. You know, saying that it's, it's not historical. You want to say uh, certain things is not biblical. Really, what it does is uh, put the spotlight on you. Okay? See, when Esau removed the apostle from the Bible, they showed you the, uh, the true nature of Edom. Because they wanted to hide what was up in that apocalypse. Okay? That's what that was all about. And for those of you who are new on the channel, what he's saying is Esau, or Idumia, or the Edomites today, is the so-called white man. Okay? But what I want to do is I'm, I'm going to stop it there. And we're going to come over here. Now, this is a... Um, this is a... Uh, article that I found one of the books it says Christopher Columbus and the participation of the Jews in the Spanish and Portuguese discoveries why because you have the Spaniards the Portuguese and the Dutch participating in the transatlantic slave trade right by Dr. M. Uh, Kaiserling from the Arthur's manuscript with his sanction and revision by Charles Gross now here I'm going to start here at the bottom and we're just going to get a little bit of context so I can prove to you that we can actually find where those lost 10 tribes are today. And it reads this book. OK, because in the book, actually. Yeah. Now, when he says this book, he's actually talking about the scriptures. All right. Says this book. Interest, uh, interested Columbus so much that he exerted three whole chapters. He was also very fond of reading the Bible. In the fourth book of Ezra, okay, which was probably written by a Jew, wasn't probably written by a Jew because it was written by a Jew, not probably, who lived outside of Palestine. Salakia. According to his own assertion, the incentive that impelled him to plan his discoveries was not a love of science, but his interpretation of the prophecies of Isaiah. So what this is saying is that Columbus used the book, the scriptures, the Apocrypha, mainly the book of Ezra, because on his voyage, he knew that there were already people over in the Americas. And the people that he was referring to was the Lost Ten Tribes. Now, let's go to the book of Second Edris. And let's see where he was reading. Because we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna get to the bottom of this, man. Now, I'm gonna start. Yeah, we're going to start at verse 40. This is 2nd Edris, chapter 13, verse 40, the Apocrypha. Those are the ten tribes which were carried away prisoners out of their own land. In the time of Hosea the king, who Salmanazar, the king of Assyria, led away captive, and he carried them over the waters, and so came they into another land. Okay? Now... If we come to second to the book of second kings 
in the Old Testament, we're going to get more context on this. Now, this is the, so we just read in second address, right? Salmanezer, the king of Assyria, led away captive and carried them over the waters. And so came they into another land. So now before I continue reading on that chapter, I want to give you a little bit of back history because this is where you have to read the history in order to understand the mystery. Okay. Second Kings chapter 17, verse one in the 12th year of Isaiah, king of Judah began Hoshea, the son of Elah to reign in Samaria over Israel nine years. Verse two. And he did that which was evil. In the sight of Yahweh, but not as the kings of Israel that were before him. So, um, the king of Judah was going off. He did which was evil in the sight of the Lord, right? But it says here, verse 3, against him came up Salmanezer, king of Assyria, which we read in 2nd Edris, and Hoshea became his servant and gave him presents. And the king of Assyria found conspiracy in Hoshea. For he has sent messengers to so king of Egypt and brought no present to the king of Assyria as he had done year by year. Therefore, the king of Assyria shut him up and bound him in prison. Then the king of Assyria came up throughout all the land and went up to Samaria and besieged it three years, meaning he took over. And the ninth year of Hoshea, the king of Assyria, took Samaria and carried Israel away into Assyria and placed them in Hala and in the harbor by the river of Gozan and in the cities of the Medes. Why did he do that? Because the king, Hoshea, he went off and he done evil in the sight of the Lord. So the Most High, right, because he forsook the covenant by going off. He also led Israel to sin. We'll read that in verse seven. For so it was that the children of Israel had sinned against Yahweh their power, which had brought them up out of the land of Egypt from under the hand of Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, and have feared other gods and walked in the statues of the heathen whom Yahweh cast out before the children of Israel and of the kings of Israel, which they had made. So now you got the backstory. King Oshir went off. OK, and because he went off, the most high led us into captivity under Salmanezer, the king of Assyria. So let's go back and read that again. Second address, chapter 13, verse 40. Those are the 10 tribes which were carried away prisoners out of their own land into the time of Ashia, the king. OK, whom Salmanezer, the king of Assyria, led away captive and he carried them over the waters. And so came they into another land. Now, verse 41, but they took this counsel, meaning the 10 tribes, they took counsel amongst themselves that they would leave the multitude of the heathen, right? And go forth into a further country where never mankind dwelt. That's key right there. This is where you have to comprehend what the scriptures are saying. Now, back here. When Simon has, uh, led the uh, 10 tribes into another land, meaning they were taken captive into Assyria. They were taken into another land, right? But the lost 10 tribes, they wanted to get back and they took counsel on themselves so that they can not leave off from the power of Yahweh, that they may keep the covenant, the law, statutes, commandments, so they, that they can leave the multitude of the heathen and not walk in their ways. But what they wanted to do was they wanted to go further away from the area and into a country where never mankind dwelt. Now, you have to think and use common sense. OK, think and use common sense. Because the problem today so like we're going to and I want to show you guys this, too, because this is part of evidence. But the problem that we have today is you have to think back then during that time, the western side of the world, which is the Americas, 
that was considered a land that no man has dwelt. This is before 1492. So we have to now start to, to realize what's going on here, and we have to put two to two together. Okay? Verse 42. That they might there, meaning when they go to that country where no mankind has ever dwelt, that they might there keep their statues, which they've never kept in their own land. Because what did we just read in 2 Kings? Hoshea, the king of Judah, went off and he led Israel to go off by sinning because they didn't keep the law, statutes, and commandments. Verse 43. And they entered into the Euphrates by the narrow passage of the river. Verse 44. For the Most High then showed signs for them and held still the flood till they passed over. What is he talking about? Because when they got into a ship, which is also showing you that they had boats back then. When they got into the ship, the Most High held back, a, you know, any storms, flood or whatever. Pretty much made sure that the passage all the way through for them to get over to the other uh, land or another country to where they wanted to go. Right. So that they can pass over peacefully. Now, here's the main, here's the meat. Verse 45. For through that country, there was a great way to go, namely of a year and a half and the same region is called Arsereth. Let's stop. America, the Americas wasn't called America until the Europeans got over there, mainly Christopher Columbus and named it after Amerigo Vespucci, okay? And called it America. What this scripture is saying here is if they were already in the region of Africa and when they, by the way of Euphrates, took the passage of the river and crossed over, which took them a year and a half to get to a region called Arsereth. It doesn't take much to realize that Arsereth is America. This is the 10 tribes. So now what I want to do is I want to grab some information and I want to back up that Arsereth is America. Okay. Now, this is an article that I managed to dig up. It's called The Migration of the Ten Tribes of Israel to the Western Hemisphere. Now, I'm just going to breeze through this. And Lord willing, um, you guys may be edified by the information I'm bringing out. So, it says here, there are many beliefs and speculations regarding what happened to the 10 tribes of Israel after they were released from Assyrian captivity by the use of various scriptures and archaeological uh, historical references. It will be determined that the 10 tribes of Israel migrated to what is known as the Americas, North, Central and South. Now, keep in mind, I've just read to you from Simeon to Issachar, you have your Dominicus, uh, Guatemalans, Puerto Ricans, Cubans, North, North American Indians, uh, Seminole Indians, the Argentinians, Argentinians, sorry, uh, Slakia, Columbus, uh, uh, Colombians, <laughs> not Columbus, Slakia, and the Mexicans. Keep in mind, okay, the history of the ten tribes starts with the three patriarchs of Israel, Abraham, and Isaac, and Jacob, okay, and basically, I'm going to breeze through this, so the story here that is portraying is, is giving you a backstory on the southern kingdom and the northern kingdom. Because King Solomon, which everybody should know from the scriptures, he sinned by going after the other gods of his uh, wives. And because of his sin, the Most High split up the kingdoms. He split the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom. Both kingdoms ended up transgressing against the law, and we all went into captivity. Now, King uh, Jeroboam led the northern kingdom, and I believe uh, Rehoboam, yeah, Rehoboam um, led Judah and Benjamin. Okay, he led, he led the southern kingdom. Now, it says here, as King Jeroboam led northern kingdom into sin, along with all the rulers that seceded him due to their wickedness, the Tetragrammaton, uh, which is Yahweh, allowed... Uh, Pelissa the third and Salmaneser the fifth kings of Assyria 
to take the ten tribes of Israel into captivity during the time of King Oshea, which we read in 2 Kings, right? Most people believe that this was the end of the northern kingdom's history, right? Because what did I say? When they took the Apocrypha out, after you read the 2 Kings, right? The northern kingdom was nowhere else to be mentioned in the Old Testament. It was all Judah, especially when you get up to the book of Jeremiah, right? Because the book of Jeremiah prophesied that the Most High Yahweh was going to uh, raise up Yahweh Shai, and I believe that's in uh, the 23rd chapter, uh, who was going to be that branch coming from the seed of uh, uh, Jesse out of the seed of David to bring back Israel as a whole, Judah, the tribe of uh, the southern kingdom, which is Judah, Benjamin, and Levi, and then uh, Israel, with, uh, Jerusalem, which is the northern kingdom, right? This is why you have to read, and this is why the Apocrypha is so important, because it gives you that lost history, okay? But it says here, however, evidence proves that this statement is inaccurate. In the book of 2nd Edris, which is found in the Apocrypha, you will find that the ten tribes migrated to another land biblically called Arsareth. Now, I already read 2nd Edris to you, right? Now, let's, let's further go. Where's uh, Arsareth? According to the Jewish Encyclopedia, Arsareth is the name of the land beyond the great river, far away from the habitation of man in which the ten tribes of Israel will dwell, observing the laws of Moses until the time of restoration. According to 4th Edris, or 2nd Edris, Columbus, Christopher Columbus, identified America with this land. Now, why would he identify America with that land? Because he knew that there were people over there that he could enslave. Otherwise, if he wasn't following the scriptures in the Apocrypha, they never would have sailed over to the New World, what they called the New World back then. You understand what I'm saying? They never would have went to the Americas at that time knowing that there were people all over there. They knew that it was uh, people over there. They knew the Israelites were over there because they were reading the scriptures. It says here, every map before the conquest of Columbus had no account of any land in the Western Hemisphere, which is right. And you can Google this stuff. It says here, proving that the Americas were not inhabited. However, there was knowledge of a further landmass. Says here, when Columbus discovered America, which he didn't discover it because you already had the uh, 10 tribes over there. There were already people dwelling there, which he labeled as Indians, indigenous. And another thing I want to point out, the spirit just jumped on me, is if you read and you can find this, um, the diaries of Columbus, why did he bring in an interpreter who spoke Hebrew? When Christopher Columbus went to the Americas and when he allegedly discovered the land, he brought interpreters who were Hebrew. OK, let that sink in. It says here, America and Arsareth were both known as the land where no man dwelt. This is why the term New World was placed on America. Also, do you know that the continent was not called America until the late 1400s by the explorer and cartographer Amerigo Vespucci. This is why the term Arsareth is applied to the continent. Although the native Indians and Hispanics are historically recorded to be the first living in the Americas prior to the European invasion and established great civilizations as the Aztec, Maya, Almec, etc. Okay? They knew themselves that they were not originally from that land but were strangers to seek uh, but were strangers to it seeking refuge in a new beginning. Let's go back to second address really quick. Now, where it says here, verse 41, but they took counsel amongst themselves, meaning the 10 tribes, that they would lead the multitude of the heathen and go forth into a further country where never mankind dwelt, that they might dare keep their statues which they never kept in their own land. 
So showing you that this somehow mirrors up because they were seeking a new beginning so that they can keep the law, statutes, and commandments. Now, it says here, here is a quote from the book Lost Tribes and Promised Lands by Ronald Sanders on page 148 that the Aztec Emperor Montezuma was documented to say. Long ago in our sacred writings, our ancestors informed us that neither I nor any of the other inhabitants of this land are indigenous to it, but our foreigners come from a completely different place and that our race was brought here by a Lord whose vessels they all were. You can't make this stuff up, man. So now I want to show you guys something. All right. This is another article to show you proof that you so-called Hispanics, Native Americans, and Latinos are the are part of the uh, Lost Ten Tribes. This is an ancient Hebrew inscription in New Mexico that was found. Okay? And I'm just going to read through this because I didn't intend for this to be long, but, you know, I'm just going through the spirit and I just want to bring this out uh, to edify you guys. So this is an article written by uh, James D. Uh, Tabor, and it says, the standard textbook wisdom that we all learn from grade school on upon is that the Americas was discovered by the Europeans and either uh, Salakia Europeans, either in 1492 by Columbus, or perhaps even a few hundred years earlier by the Vikings. There seems to be an, uh, an aversion among the establishment historians to even consider the idea idea that ancient Mediterranean peoples might have traveled to the Americas in the centuries before our era, except for certain fringe scholarship, particularly promoted by Mormon historians, the standard view is considered indisputable. The very idea that uh, primitive peoples from Cyprus, Phoenicia, Greece, or Libria, uh, Liberia, Salak, had the sailing sophistication to cross the Atlantic is thought to be improbable, if not absurd. Now, just want to get to the point. Started from here. In September 1996, visited the Los Luna site with a group of associates for in an initial survey of evidence. I have also interviewed Professor Frank Hibben local historian and archaeologist from the University of New Mexico who is convinced the inscription is an ancient and thus authentic, meaning they found the stone in Los Lunas, which is called the Los Lunas Stone, where there was an inscription written in the holy tongue, Lashkawash uh, Kadash, Paleo-Hebrew. And I'm going to show you evidence of that. It says here, he reports that the first saw the text in 1933. At the time, it was uh, covered with liching and pantanation and was hardly visible. He was taken to the site by a guide who had seen it as a boy back in the 1880s. Thus, we have eyewitness evidence going back over a hundred years that the inscription existed. This alone is impressive since it is rather uh, preposterous to imagine some pranksters or forgers operating with a knowledge of Paleo Hebrew in the late 1800s when this ancient alphabet was not even fully known to the scholars. Okay, now these links I, uh, that I provide you, I'm going to put them in a the description box so that you guys can click on the links and read these information yourselves so you can see that I'm not lying, I'm telling the truth. Now, Let's go to the Lost Luna Stone. Here's another article. Okay. This is a little picture of the stone found in New Mexico. Let's read a little bit of this uh, article that this brother brought out. And it says here, this is the Lost Luna Stone in New Mexico in which the native so-called Hispanic tribes and the so-called Native American tribes lived. The writings on the stone is ancient Paleo-Hebrew that proves that the native indigenous peoples of the Americas were the Hebrew Israelites. 
Okay? Says here, this is the translation of the lost lunar stone. It is scriptures from the Holy Bible teaching the commandments of Yahweh, which is the name of the Father. Another stone in the Americas that say Yahweh Allah Yanawa, which is Yahweh our power. Okay? Yahweh, meaning he is, he exists, Allah Yanawa, which is thy power, our power. Okay? And here you have picture. Uh, which could particularly be one of the men from the ten tribes. Okay, you have the Israelites here dwelling in that land. Okay, and notice. See if I can zoom in a little bit in that background. And notice here the little shaped small pyramids, which shows you as proof, because when you look at those pyramids that they said that the Mayans built, they're the same pyramid structure. That you see in Egypt, which tells you that when the Israelites were in captivity during Egypt, those pyramids were made by us. It wasn't made by no damn uh, aliens. Okay, but not to digress. Let's continue on. Let's get to the point. From Montezuma to the Mayans, to the Aztecs, to the Native Americans, they built the same pyramids Negroes built because we are the same. And we built them together in, uh, in Egyptian slavery. They were light brown to dark black skin as the so-called Afro-American Negroes are as well. Most importantly, the ancient writings in these places are found to be ancient Paleo-Hebrew, proving they are the Hebrew Israelites. According to the scriptures, that is how we got the land before they ended up taking it from us. Now, they're going to give you what I already brought out, but we're just going to breeze through this so you guys can get the understanding and you can put two and two together. And it reads, the Apocrypha, 2nd Edris 13, starting at verse 40. Those are the ten tribes which were carried away prisoners out of their land in the time of Shea the king, who Salmon as the king of Assyria led away captive. And he carried them over the waters, and so came they into another land. After King Solomon... The whole kingdom of Israel split into two kingdoms because you had the northern kingdom and you had the southern kingdom. And it says here, the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom, the northern kingdom consisted of the ten tribes and was called the kingdom of Israel, with Samaria being its capital. The southern kingdom was of the, uh, Salakia, was of the three tribes and was called the kingdom of Judah, with Jerusalem as its capital. King uh, Salmanazar of Assyria took captive the northern kingdom and took them into their land. Why? Because we read that in the book of 2 Kings chapter 17, verse 41. But they took this counsel among themselves that they would leave the multitude of the heathen and go forth into a further country where never mankind dwelt. But the northern kingdom decided to revolt against Assyrian rule and go to a place on a planet where no man ever had dwelt up until that time which was now so-called America, Salakia. Verse 42. That they might there keep their statutes, which they never kept in their own land, and they enter into the Euphrates by the narrow places of the river, for the Most High then showed signs for them and held still the flood till they passed over. The Most High gave to the 12 tribes of Israel different qualities and, tra uh, and traits for their survival. Now, I think this is uh, 1 Chronicles chapter 12, verse 32. And of the children of Issachar, which are the Mexicans, which were men that had understanding of the times, to know what Israel ought to do, the heads of them were 200, and all their brethren were at their commandment. The tribe of Issachar understood the signs and the times, how to navigate and read the stars. I'll give you an example. The Mexicans, they're very good at, what's, uh, at reading the times uh, of the stars. That's why when you look at the, Mayan, uh, the Mayans, when they had their calendar and everything, they based everything upon the moon, the stars, the cycle of the earth. Okay, because the scriptures tells you uh, that, and let's see if I can get it. Let's 
It's a lot. Uh, I gotta find it. Here we go. Um, this will do, but this is not the one I'm looking for. Uh, one of you brothers can probably put it up on the comment board, but this is uh, the book of Psalms, chapter 104, verse 19. He appointed the moon for seasons. The sun knoweth his going down. Okay? Because when you read the book of Genesis, the moon, the stars, okay, was appointed unto us for signs of the seasons okay because when you celebrate when you break up things like the sabbath okay you have the the um the sabbath where that's the day of rest where no man no maid no servant is supposed to do any work you're not supposed to cook you go by the sabbath through the new moon okay when the new moon comes in all right from sundown evening to sundown the next day that's your sabbath okay and the, the way you will base the sabbath is by the new moon not the full moon the new moon okay so you will look to the moon all right as a way to judge what time you were in the time of day the month okay when the moon goes full when it becomes a full moon that lets you know that you're right in the middle of the month Okay, so what we go through today, all right, through the Catholic, uh, uh, from the Catholic Church making up the uh, Gregorian calendar, we're going off. Okay, because we depend on the, uh, the Gregorian calendar, which is not what we're supposed to be doing. We're supposed to be judging the times through the signs of the sky. Okay, um, that's what the scripture says that. You can uh, you can you can't uh, decipher the times um, when you was talking to the, uh, the, the, the scribes and stuff. He said, and I'm just roughly paraphrasing that you can't decipher the times, but you can, you know, uh, pretty much scoff and do everything else. But when you look to the when these uh, signs come upon us, meaning the last days, these prophecies start to to pick up. You can't look and, and, and decipher the times that we're in, you know, so, but nevertheless, let's get back to it. Um, let's see. Yes, there it is right there. <laughs> uh, this is the book of Matthew 16 and 3. And in the morning, it will be foul weather to uh, today for the sky is red and uh, lowering. O ye hypocrites, ye can discern the face of the sky, but ye cannot discern the signs of the times. So that's what Yahweh Shah meant, because the moon, the stars, and everything was made to be signs for us. But we don't go through that because we fell away from our heritage. Okay? We ain't supposed to be into astrology and um your different zodiac signs. That all comes from Babylonian, the mystery Babylonian uh mystery school system. That don't come from us, right? But not to digress, let's keep it moving. The so-called ancient Mayans are world-renowned for their Mayan calendar and its accuracy and understanding the times, letting you know that one of the ten tribes were the so-called Mexicans, the descendants of the Mayans. Second Edris, chapter 13, verse 45. Here's the point. For through that country there was a great way to go, namely a year and a half in the same region is called Arsarid. Now, on the eastern hemisphere, from one point of the hemisphere to the furthest point, for an example, from Russia to Africa or China to Australia or even Australia to Russia, it wouldn't take a year and a half to travel that distance. However, going from the eastern hemisphere to the western hemisphere, especially 
in antiquity without planes and modern technology would have taken a year and a half to cross the Atlantic Ocean. And he's right. I'm just going to drop down, skip the scriptures. Um, says here, whoever came to the land, never mankind dwelt, would be there until the latter times, which is our days in which we live. When Columbus came to the Arcer to the Arcerith, so-called Americas, named after Amerigo Vespucci, he had Hebrew interpreters aboard his ships. Why? Because the natives here were Hebrew Israelites. The royalty of the earth, the so-called Latin tribes and Native American Indian tribes, along with Levites, who are the so-called Haitians, who were the priests. Now, this goes into uh, the Old Testament, which we already read. I'm not going to reread re that again. I just want to get to the meat so that you guys can take on what I'm saying. Um, right. Because remember, we were, uh, it's, the scriptures prophesied that we would be scattered across the four winds of the earth for not obeying the law, statutes, and commandments. Uh, this is the, he has here. Um, actually, I'll, I'll start here. It says here, this is Isaiah 14 and 1. For the Lord Yahweh will have mercy on Jacob, which is Judah, Benjamin, and Levi, and will yet choose Israel, which is the ten tribes as well. And set them in their own land. And the strangers, which are those other nations, shall be joined with them. And they shall cleave to the house of Jacob. The Most High will yet choose Israel and return them into their own land. Their own land, their own land. Everybody on the planet is in their own land except for us. Which is true. Because you so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, right? The land that we're in now, America, that's not our land. Yes, we were there, and the Most High led us to that land, right? But the scripture prophesied that we was going to be in that land in the latter days because prophecy had to uh, fill out. America is known as what we call uh, Babylon the Great or the Daughter of Babylon, all right? And Lord willing, I'll do another lesson breakdown on that, proving that, okay? Everybody else is in their land except for us. We will, we will be returned by the Most High to our land in the kingdom of Israel. Now, verse 2, And the people shall take them, which means Israel, and bring them to their place, and the house of Israel shall possess them in the land of Yahweh for servants and handmaids. What does possess mean? When you go to possess something, that means you take it. We're not coming up to ask you. We're not coming up to beg you. No, we're going to take you. We're going to take all you heathens. Okay? Because what does the scripture say? Let's go to Psalms. We're going to go to Psalms. 147. Verse 19. He showed his word, meaning the most high, Yahweh, the Lord. He showeth his word unto Jacob his statutes and his judgments unto Israel. He had not dealt so with any nation. And as for his judgments, they have not known them. Praise ye the Lord. So the law of statutes and commandments was only given to the house of Israel and Judah. These other nations who are not of the 12 tribes, it was not given to them. Let's get a preset. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 63. Let's bring this out. Okay. I'm going to start at verse 17. O Lord, why hast thou made us to err from thy ways and harden our heart from thy fear? Return for thy servant's sake the tribes of thy inheritance. Why? Because the promise was given to Jacob. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Verse 18. The people of thy holiness have possessed it but a little while. Our adversaries, meaning the heathen nations, have trodden down thy sanctuary. Why? Because we were in power when we ruled for 40 years under King Solomon until he, uh, until, because you got to remember, when we were in power, we had all the nations under subjection unto us. And the whole earth was at peace at that time. 
Okay? But it says here, verse 18, our adversaries have trodden down thy sanctuary. Verse 19, here's the point. We are thine. Thou never bearest rule over them. They were not called by thy name. Because Isaiah was saying the other nations were not were never called. What do we just read in Psalms 147? Jacob and Israel was chosen. They were given a law, statutes, and commandments. These other heathen nations were never given anything, nor were they called to do so. Okay? Now, I want to show you proof. This is the stone that's in New Mexico today, Lost Luna Stone. Okay? Showing you proof that if you can see the text, this is Paleo Hebrew. This is the original tongue that the true Israelites were speaking in. Not that Yiddish modern day Hebrew uh, Aramaic script, which is a mixture of uh, Germanic. Uh, uh, you know, basically German, um, I think a little bit of Russian and so forth. Basically, your uh, so-called Jews today over the land of Israel are known as your uh, Khazars. OK, and you can do research on that. And I'll, Lord willing, I can put a lesson together to go further into that. But this is the so-called stone. OK, this is the this is the relic that was left showing you that the people in the scriptures in the Apocrypha, came over to the land of the Americas. Okay? There's proof right there. Now, here's another uh, article to back it up, and I'll just quickly uh, breeze through this because um, I know this is taking a while, but I just wanted to bring out this information to show you guys. Um, this is from the uh, Jewish Encyclopedia, The Lost Ten Tribes. The Jewish Encyclopedia says here, this is under the Americas. Immediately after the discovery of Central and South America, the legend of the lost tribes began to be referred to the aboriginal inhabitants. Garcia and his origin de los uh, Medio, uh, uh, Medionis declares that the tribes passed over the Strait of Anani, Bering Strait, and went by that way to Mexico and South America. He deduces their identity from the common uh, cowardice and want of charity of the Israelites and Indians. Both of these people, according to him, bury their dead on the hills, give kisses on the cheek as a sign of peace, tear their clothes as a sign of mourning, and dance as a sign of triumph. Uh, Garcia claimed to have found many Hebrew terms in the American language. According to Manessa ben Israel, Antonio Matis, uh, Matesinos disposed in 1644 before the Bet Den of Amsterdam that while traveling in Peru, he had met with a number of the natives who recited the Shema in Hebrew and who informed him through an interpreter that they were Israelites descended from Reuben. And that the tribe of Joseph dwelt in the midst of the sea. He supported their statements by tracing Jewish customs among other inhabitants of Central and South America. The Indians of uh, Yucatan, uh, Salaki if I pronounced that uh, wrong. And the Mexicans rent their garments in mourning and kept uh, perpetual fires upon their altars. As did also the uh, Peruvians. The Mexicans kept the Jubilee, while the Indians of Peru and Guat uh, Guatemala observed the custom of the Levirate marriage. Manessa ben Israel therefore concluded that the aboriginal inhabitants of America were the lost ten tribes. And as he was of the opinion that the Messiah, Yahweh who come when the whole world was inhabited by the descendants of Israel. He directed his efforts to obtaining admission for the Jews to the British islands from which they were at the time excluded. It says here, the Mexican theory was later taken up by Viscount Kingsborough, who devoted his life and fortune for proving the thesis that the Mexicans were descended from the lost 10 tribes and published a magnificent and expensive work on the subject. 
Antiquities of Mexico. That's a, uh, that's a book we shall all check out. It's got a lot of history and uh, facts in that book. It says here, Kingsborough's uh, chief arguments are that Mexicans and Israelites believe in both devils and angels as well as in miracles and use the blood of sacrifice in the same way, namely by pouring it out on the ground. Also, that the high priest of Peru is the only one allowed to enter the inner most holy part of the temple and that the uh, Peruvians anointed the ark as did the Israelites. He also finds many similarities in the myths and legends. Thus, certain Mexican heroes are said to have wrestled with, I'm not even going <laughs> to try to pronounce that word, uh, like Jacob with the angel in Tukides of Mexico. So, just going back to the chart, <clears throat> Simeon, Dominicans, Zebulun, Guat uh, Guatemalans, Ephraim, Puerto Ricans, Manessa, Cubans, Gad, North American Indians, Reuben, Seminole Indians, Neftali, the Argentinians, Asher, Colombians, and Issachar, Mexicans, you guys make up the 10 tribes of Israel. Okay? So, I want to close out. Let's get a scripture. Um, So, 1 Thessalonians 5 and 1 says, prove all things, hold fast that which is good. And the reason I want to bring the scripture is because when we read the scriptures, um, we have to go by what the word says. And then we also have to prove by going into facts, bringing out certain history, uh, documentation, articles and whatever thing. And that's what I wanted to do here, because the scripture also says that, um, not only to prove all things, but to study, to show thyself approved. I think that's in the book of Timothy. Yep. Second Timothy says here, study to show thyself approved unto the Most High, a workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. And this is the word of truth. You so-called Hispanics, Latinos, and Native Americans, you come from the lost 10 tribes of Israel. You so-called Negroes, you're from the tribe of Judah. OK, and all you Haitians. OK, and you, um, you know, you uh, West Indies and you Haitians, you make up the tribes of Benjamin and Levi. So uh, Akiams and Aquas, I hope that this lesson was uh, edifying. OK, and I uh, just want to say Shalom to my family, uh, Shalom to the apostles and elders, Shalom to the elect scattered across the four winds of the earth. All right. Take care, everybody. Until next time. Uh, Lord willing, I'll break out another, uh, another lesson and break down. Shalom.